Hello, friends. Greetings of the day. I, Sisi Busnur, private investigator, am back with a new video log. People in the security forces have a very interesting case. That is, they have animals among their colleagues. As you know, mules, horses, camels, dogs, and pigeons are inducted into the forces. Yes, I am aware uh, since my childhood of the canine squad, and I have heard a lot about uh, great breakthroughs achieved in investigation where the canine squad had a prime role. In fact, canine squad is not a surprising thing to me as I had already seen the extent of training that can be imparted to the dogs. And uh, during my childhood, my childhood friend, Mr. Suresh Kundi, now an advocate, had successfully trained a pair of great then canines, uh, which could identify the scents, different uh, scents. And uh, a good demonstration was uh, shown to me in those days. So an astonishing tale of doggedness that the four-legged hero of Belgian Malino breed is not an ordinary thing, an extraordinary thing. The three-year-old labor dog called Rocket, a member of K-9 Assault Dog Unit of the National Security Guard, which specializes in detecting human presence and improvised explosive devices, played a very crucial role during a counter-terrorist operation at the Patan Court Air Force Air Base in January 2016. There's also, there's a story of a mule named Pidongi who was awarded the honor for its services by naming an army mess launch after it. Stories have grown of her feats, suggesting that she was once caught by Pakistanis, but managed to make her way back to the Indian army outpost, carrying the munition and other uh, things belonging to the Pakistanis back to Indian post. So she was recognized and uh, she received the Veer Chakra Award. There's also recently a story of a heroic dog named Janjir who served thousands of, who saved thousands of lives in 1993 in Mumbai blast case. Working with the bomb squad, the heroic Kanan detected over 3,329 kgs of RDX explosives, 600 detonators, 249 hand grenades, and more than 6,000 rounds of live ammunition. No wonder he was also he had they also held a word three more bombs in the following days following the first blast, thus saving countless lives. So now India's first war memorial dedicated to service animals is coming up in Meerut. Very interesting. It is well deserved uh, memorial what is coming up for them. And coming back to today's topic, it's about the shoplifting or what they call it as shrinkage. So shoplifting or shrinkage is a serious issue. There are no typical shoplifters. They can be of any age, gender, race, and economic background. 
usually there are two categories of uh, shoplifters so the one first one is known as boosters who are more professional and uh, they steal so that they can go and sell resell the things what are uh, stolen and there are again some people called as niches who are amateurs and they steal for their personal use only so generally the shop uh, shop thieves are driven by either economic or psychological motives psychological motives may include peer pressure or desire for thrill or excitement impulse intoxication or some kind of compulsion a survey of retail crimes and loss in the world says india has the highest retail shrinkage that up to 3.2% which is the great in the world now retail shrinkage is the loss of products due to shoplifting employee theft also included sometimes uh, the paper work uh, errors can happen and then again there is a very peculiar thing which is called as supplier fraud or supplier fraud perhaps it is not uh, that uh, easy it, uh, the someone from inside has to be involved and uh, other accomplish in that uh, this thing and uh, the merchandise in uh, shops are displayed in a manner which can be very tempting so the shoplifting really is a thing like some people, some shop decorations they come they are inviting of course to these people in a way it appears the, there is a decrease in uh, restraint about stealing from shop than from individual person they know they have uh, little chance of getting caught and provide them an uh, anonymity factor and if caught they can often produce plausible explanation excuses such as forgetting to pay and all so this is about uh, this thing generally the most stolen merchandise is including uh, generally the most stolen articles are merchandise is including jewelry electronic gadgets cosmetics razor blades branded watches and perfumes the smaller the item the chances of getting stolen is high some of the common methods used by shoplifters are uh, hiding them in the most uh, hiding them with them items are concealed in clothing of shoplifter in handbags in strollers in umbrellas or inside a purchased uh, goods uh, after other methods include uh, blind uh, spotting price label switching they switch price label from one thing to the other so that at the counter they have to pay a price which is lesser than the uh, actual cost of that product then there are short changing uh, cashes also possibility and then phony returns they come with excuses and try to return the goods and so on there are so many things techniques they use and many of these uh, thieves they most of the while they work in a team and uh, in a groups of two or more uh, people sometimes they are connived with the staff members from inside and uh, shoplifters also take advantage of busy store hours or they may hit the times when employees are less alert such as uh, the opening time or the closing time or the shift changing time or something like that so these are the general happenings of the shoplifting which i have brought to you with a 
just a generalized uh, way. And that for all for the day. Please share and comment to, and also make your points in the comment box. Thank you, and Jai Hind.